Hello friends, welcome back to G-Centric. So in this lecture we will see types of sources. In the previous lecture we have completed types of elements. Okay, we have seen five categories under the types of elements. So coming to the types of sources, we have got two classification that is independent sources and dependent sources. So under dependent source, independent sources we have got two types, voltage and current source. And for each of the classification we have two more categories that is ideal, practical and here also ideal and practical. So together there are four categories under this which are those it is ideal voltage source and practical voltage source and ideal current source and practical current source. Now coming to these dependent sources basically they do not exist in the real world but we use only independent sources for in our uh, calculations and in the real world. But for the dependent sources we use it in modeling of the solid state like for op-amps and all. Okay. So for the in this in this classification also we have four subclassification of dependent sources that is voltage dependent current source, current dependent current source, voltage dependent voltage source and current dependent voltage source. So first we will start with the ideal voltage source then we will come to the practical voltage source. So first one is ideal voltage source. So first we will see how do we how do we represent it symbolically. So for DC we represent it with a circle and plus minus sign that is for DC that is for direct current we represent like this. If it is AC then the symbol for this is just like a sinusoid. Okay. So, this uh, we have got Vm sin omega t or Vm cos omega t. So, this is the symbolic representation of the voltage source. Now, coming to the circuit diagram of the ideal voltage source, we will take a DC voltage source connected to load ok so current is IL this is load and voltage across the load is we will call it as terminal voltage and that is VT. So practically the ideal source does not exist it will be having some internal resistance so we will see it in the practical voltage source. Now we can conclude that since there is no internal resistance so internal resistance is 0 internal resistance is 0 ohms. So if we take the inverse of 0 ohms we will get infinite Siemens. Okay. So this is the internal resistance is 0. So when internal resistance is 0 does the voltage this voltage depend on load current? No. Whatever the voltage is here in the source side it will appear across the load side. So we can conclude that Vt is equal to V. Now if we have to draw the graph of this then we will take Vt as a, on y axis and load current on x axis. So, we will get a straight line. Okay. So, this is this is voltage. Okay. So, whether seeing this graph whether we can say whether it is linear or non-linear. So, it is non-linear. It does not obey Ohm's law because Ohm's law is only for valid for linear type of sources. Now, this is non-linear and this is V which is equal to terminal voltage. So, this is about the uh, ideal voltage source. Now, we will see what will happen when internal resistance is added that is the practical voltage source. Okay, that is our second one is practical voltage source. So, we will take a source DC voltage source of V then we will do we will add the internal resistance okay, and it is connected to load. The voltage across the load is Vt and this is V and the here it is current IL is flowing okay, then plus minus we have got current here also IL. Okay, so 
Now, if we want to calculate the terminal voltage, we will apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law. We will see what do we mean by Kirchhoff's voltage law in the upcoming class. Now, if we have to do, if we have to take the summation of the voltages, then V minus IL into RS minus VT equal to 0. So, this is basically KVL. Then we will equate to VT. Vt is nothing but V minus IL into RS. So, this is the formula for calculating the terminal voltage across the load. Now, if we see the graph of this. So, for the first case let us take IL is equal to 0. So, when IL is equal to 0, we get Vt is equal to V. That is terminal voltage is equal to source voltage. So, we will mark it here. So, this is the point V when I L is equal to 0. Next, when we take as we increase the value of I L since it is negative then as we increase this negative value this terminal voltage gets reduced. So, when it reaches that point that V T will be equal to 0. So, when V T is equal to 0 then I L will be equal to V upon R S. Okay? So, this value will be V upon R S when v terminal voltage across this load is 0. So, if we will mark it on the graph. So, here is I L it is V upon R S. So, the slope joins these two points. Okay? So, this is when I L is equal to 0, this is when V T is equal to 0. Now, from this graph again, this is non-linear. So, practical voltage source even the Ohm's law cannot be applied for that. So, it does not agree the linearity property. Okay? So, this is about the practical voltage source. So, next we will move on to the ideal current source. Okay? Ideal current source. So, first we will see the symbolic representation of current source. So, if it is DC, then we will just represent it with the arrow. Okay. So, this is for direct current. Now, and it is I. If we have to represent it in AC, again the symbol is same, but only thing that changes is the magnitude. I am sin omega t or I am cos omega t. This is for AC representation. So, this is the symbolic representation of the ideal current sources. Now, coming to the circuit diagram, we will take a DC current source I and a load connected to. Okay, this is load and across which the terminal voltage is again V t and current here is I l that is flowing across the load. But uh, here this is ideal current ideal current source. So, there will be no resistance across this uh, across this load. Okay? So, now we will make the conclusion that internal resistance is infinite. internal resistance is infinite ohm. That is because if we add a resistor across this load, then uh, if, if it becomes this internal resistance represented by R s, if it becomes infinite, then it will become the open circuit. So, there will not be any res internal resistance. So, in this case, we will see that I l is equal to I. So, the load current will be equal to current source. Okay. So, if we have to plot the graph, here is I L, here is V T. So, in the ideal current, uh, ideal voltage source, we said that voltage, terminal voltage is not dependent upon the load current. Now, in this ideal current source, we will conclude that the load current is independent of the value terminal voltage. Okay. So, this is the graph. Again, it is a function of non-linearity. So, here also Ohm's law is not valid. Okay. So, this is the ideal current source. 
Okay, coming to the practical current source, we will take the circuit diagram having the internal resistance. So, this is current source I having internal resistance Rs okay, and connected across the load. This load has got the terminal voltage Vt and the load current IL and here also the terminal voltage appears same here also across this resistor that is the internal resistor it is also Vt and here from the current source there is current I flowing through it. Now applying KCL to this that is Kirchhoff's current law we will see this also in the upcoming lectures ok. So first of all applying the Kirchhoff's current law we will get I is equal to so this is incoming and here the current is again going this way. So I is equal to Vt upon Rs plus Il. So if we want to equate to the Il we will get I minus Vt upon Rs. So this is the equation to find the load current across this load. Now if you have to draw the graph for this here is load current and x axis is representing terminal voltage. So first we will take when Vt is equal to 0. So when Vt is equal to 0 Il will be equal to I. So this is the point when IL is equal to I and terminal voltage is 0. Next when we increase the terminal voltage since it has got negative sign as we increase the negative value this value will decrease and at some point this value will be equal to 0. So when IL is equal to 0 I will be I will be equal to uh, Vt upon Rs and Vt will be equal to I into Rs. Okay. So, this terminal voltage will mark it here that is the value of terminal voltage will be I into Rs. Now, when we join this graph we will again we do not get the linearity uh, property because it does not pass through the origin here also Ohm's law is not applicable. So, practical current source it uh, does not follow the linearity concept and hence Ohm's law becomes invalid for practical current source. Now, we will take an example where we have voltage source and two resistors which is of 6 ohm. Let this voltage be 18 volts. Okay, so, this is the source voltage. It has got two resistors of 6 ohm and 3 ohm and we have to measure the current flowing through this line. Okay. So, this is nothing but the ammeter. Okay. So, this is the ammeter. So, what is the work of the ammeter? It measures the current flowing through the circuit. Now, since this ammeter uh, we can again represent this circuit as plus minus 18 volts. Okay. So, this ammeter does not have any internal resistance. So, this will be 6 ohm as it is 3 ohms. So, we can remove this ammeter and short circuit this path as it does not have any internal resistance. So, this some current I okay. and here is I we will take this as I1 and we will take this as I2. Now, the property of the current is that where the resistance is very low it will take that path. Since we have got resistance in this line that is 3 ohms it will not flow here but definitely it will pass through the 6 ohm circuit, 6 ohm resistor and it will directly take this path. So this line it becomes dead. So this value this line does not have any significance for this circuit. So now I1 will be equal to I2 same circuit becomes open here. So, same current will flow through this and we can calculate I is equal to 18 upon 6 that is 3 amperes. So, 3 ampere will cur current will flow through this circuit. Now, we can make some of the conclusions that if we will make a table 
where we have internal resistance okay internal resistance and we will take first one that is voltage source okay so voltage source the the internal resistance of voltage source is 0 ohms okay and second current source so the internal resistance of current source is infinite ohms and thirdly we will take ammeter where it has got 0 ohms as internal resistance ok so we have seen here it, it does not have any internal resistance now coming to the voltmeter it has got infinite ohms so this is the for voltage source and current source we have 0 ohms and infinite ohms so if you compare current and ammeter they are opposite to each other ok their values is opposite to each other similarly voltage source and voltmeter if voltage source is 0 ohms then voltmeter has got infinite ohms of the internal resistance ok so coming to the dependent sources now we have seen there are four categories under this so first we will see how these dependent sources are uh, symbolized we will see its symbolic representation and we have also uh, know that it is not used in the real world it is used for solid state modeling ok so if we see the symbolic representation it is represented by the diamond sign so whenever this sign is encountered in the circuit we we, we should know that it is a dependent source ok so we can write here plus minus kvx then we will make another 3 plus minus kix So, seeing this there are 4 categories we have seen. So, now how do we represent this one? We first of all will take whichever sign is inside. So, this plus and minus uh, represents the voltage source. We will write first this part voltage source and it is dependent on the function Vx. So, this V also represents the voltage. So, we can write this as voltage dependent voltage source. Okay. Similarly, coming to this again whichever sign is inside the diamond we will write it. So, it is also voltage source, but it is dependent on current source. So, this we will call it as current dependent voltage source. Now, in this uh, diamond shape we have got current source. So, we will write first that term and it is dependent on voltage. So, we will write it as voltage dependent current source. Now, similarly for this also it has got current source inside the diamond, but it is dependent on Ix. So, this is nothing but current dependent current source. So, this is how we represent. First write the one that is inside the symbol, then write the one which is outside the symbol. So, these all factors depend upon the one that is uh, outside the symbol. Okay. So, all dependent sources by default they are linear in nature. Okay. They follow the linearity. Linear in nature. So, we have also concluded that whichever elements they are linear, they are bilateral also. Okay. So, they are bilateral in nature. So, it follows both linearity as well as bilateral. Okay. So, we can represent this also as uh, non-linearity when we take squares of this one. Okay. Since this is not related to our syllabus, we will ignore that. So, we will only concentrate on linear dependent sources. Okay, so, this completes our third unit. We have seen types of elements and types of sources. Okay, so, this is the uh, completion of the unit 3. So, in the next lecture, we will see some basic solving techniques. Okay, we will start with the numericals. This is these up to here, up to unit 3, it is all the foundation for solving the uh, network theory problems. Okay, thank you.